We want the bloke to fail, really, don't we? Jordy Juno's back at the Walker Dome. Thought we'd do a, I say a midweek video, it'll probably be Friday by the time people end up watching it this. Will. But it's been a while since you and me have done a video as well. Um, yeah. You've been in Germany with Jordan. Yeah. Um, just first of all, how, how, how was that trip? Uh, as you've all seen, we did a video. Thanks for all the support and everybody who watched that out there. It did amazingly well. It was our best ever video mm. um, on all metrics, apart from I think watch time. Maybe people <laughs> got a bit bored of um, sweating away in the German sun. But no, it was brilliant. Thanks for that. Germany itself was an amazing trip. Um, unique in many ways. Um, simply because of not just Eddie Howe's reaction, but just the, the environment, being in and around the Adidas HQ was just something beyond anything I'd ever done before. Um, I'm a mass, I've got about 25 pairs of Adidas trainers, so. Hey, I've got, I've got, got mine your, on, yeah, your yeah. Nike. I know, I've got, I've got my Nike sliders <laughs> sure. on. I've I'm got my Mike umbro to top fair. on as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm Mike. Right, we're, a, we're a mixed bag today. But no, it was, it was amazing. It was just like uh, a, a bucket list type thing. I didn't even know it was on my bucket list till I went, <laughs> but it was, uh, it's definitely ticked off. Yeah, so that, that looked good. Moving forward, Newcastle played a friendly over in Germany. Yes. 1-3-1. Sandro Tonali could not play, but secret friendly behind closed doors, training ground against Burnley. He did. He did play. <laughs> and I guess the explanation between that about that was obviously the fact Newcastle playing at a neutral venue, Adidas H HQ, against a third tier German yes. side, Unterhatchen, I the think. The third, yeah, yeah. The third tier. So that has to be registered as a game, whereas Burnley, you go to a club's training ground, you can do what you want. That game. According to Newcastle, never officially never took happened. place. No. It never happened. Try to contact Newcastle, they will not say a thing about <laughs> it. They never announced it, it never happened. The only reason people knew about it is because a slip of the but, tongue from Burnley, really. Yeah, well, they did the same with the uh, the, uh, the game in Germany. They, they, they were so desperate to keep that behind yeah. like closed doors and for no fans to turn up that they didn't really say that they had one. Yeah. We knew there was going to be one. It would be yeah. hinted also long enough. We never knew the opposition, but no. it was probably a local German side. Oh, well, we predicted it, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, we didn't know many. Let's no. put it that way. That's <laughs> we're, a little we're joke too, an internal joke there. Um, we we'll joke that the media eleven might have to. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I was fancying playing up front. I might have. Uh, <laughs> might have scored. Might have scored. <laughs> I don't think I would have scored. Mm. Yeah, well, what a laugh. Um, it was good in Germany, and I think Newcastle. Oh, it's been a. It's been, look. I kind of deny it's been a weird. It's been a really weird six months at Newcastle United. I feel massively like the football club is heading in the right direction, um, in lots of ways. But there's just so. I don't know. It, it wouldn't be Newcastle if it, would, it wasn't. No, and that's not forward it, it, thinking, but with an asterisk. There's always an asterisk. Everything that's done, even the stuff that's come out this week, with regards to the the, the pricing of, of how much it costs to watch games in the summer, and the fact that we know that barely anybody's bought a ticket for the Seller Cup. Yeah. We know that, and, and like anybody who who was on here when we did that video, we all said that, and, and it was like. I, my point I'm going to make, and this is going to go. You've got, he's got notes, by the way, and I'm going to go off on a tangent here. I think there's only so many, and I'm not going to be. I've been accused of being Mr. Negative at times okay. for certain things, but this is one thing I do feel passionate about, and I'm going to say it. I don't care whether it's negative or not. There's only so many times in, in this area, in an area. This isn't London. This is Newcastle. It's the northeast of England. It doesn't have the riches, and it doesn't have the average earnings of anywhere else in the country. So yes. the price things at the same similar prices to what you get elsewhere is wrong. Not saying they're necessarily doing that, but there's only so many times you can go to the well. Last month, everybody went to the well for the new kit. Brilliant. Oh, there's another train top. Oh, I might get that as well. Oh, I like that. I might get that. Now you've got to pay for your membership because you want a ticket for Southampton. Oh, right. Okay. So that's only going to cost us £47 for a ticket. But the membership as well. But the membership as well. If you want to watch it in your new kit, you're spending basically 200 quid. Exactly. And you were expected to buy tickets for this seller cup. With, with I mean, look, come in the comments. Champions League this, Champions League. I heard it, Al. You're not having it. Who are the man? <laughs> like, <laughs> it, isn't, it isn't great. Tomorrow? No, but what you want is you need something to hang your hat on. The best game of the whole weekend is... Newcastle ladies against AC Milan. <laughs> that is the best game of the weekend. Yeah. It's a name, it's a stellar name and one you can hang your hat on. The yeah. men's opposition, although I'm not saying in a football sense, it is a good challenge. And I'm sure they'll yes. pose lots of good challenge. And it, it will be, be great, great game. It will be great build-up. I've got no doubt about that. It looks perfect the way they've pitched it. But putting that on a poster and trying to sell it, 
most fans, a lot of normal fans will go, who? And, and let's be honest about that. That's, that's, I think they could have done better, and that's why they're not going to get many people going through. Unless, the big unless, is you guys go to Japan and we'll see some new faces yes, over there that suddenly it. get people excited. That's what you need to do. That's what they need to and do. And they need to get that player going, come see me at the Seller Cup. Because yes. they had Joe Linton promoting it, and yeah. he's like, um and all. We've already seen you, mate, for five years. <laughs> five years? Five years with Joe Linton. So there's a bit of that. They need, they need, they, I feel like this summer needs a bit of a kick up the backside. It's yes. it's actually had a lot a lot of positives, but it's like you say, there's so many asterisks in there. Yeah. Is that like asterisks? Yeah. yeah, it's a word, isn't it? Yeah, we'll, mm. we'll see. It, I'm doing a Paul Mitchell and making words <laughs> up. <laughs> How was he anyway? You had a. Really good, really impressed. Um, got a chance to have a little a little chat amongst everybody, and he was, he was an impressive guy. Um, very la- relatable. So we, we made the impression with Ashworth. We, we all liked him. We met him, didn't we? A yeah, few yeah. times. Liked him. And one thing that really shone through with uh, Ashworth, which I'm not saying doesn't shine through with Mitchell, was the professionalism. I would say that was probably the biggest thing that I thought, like, oh, there's a professional guy, really knows what he's doing. Mitchell's really relatable. That's not right. saying there's nothing about his professionalism. He just He's just like a, a normal bloke. Is it the northern vibe? Aye, it could Is be. It? I mean, that could be me being the most colloquial... <laughs> <laughs> Northern Daphne going. Yeah. I just related. Yeah. I, he talked a bit like us. He acted a bit like us, and there was just something about him. They think, I like you. Okay. That was my that was my take. I was just, I like first you. impression. Yeah, and, yeah. But obviously, actions speak louder than words, and he'll be judged on what's what's to come, and how much how much influence he can actually have in this in this present setup. I mean, that's, we, that's we know a big talking point, wasn't it last week? Yeah, that that was it. Eddie Howe wants control of transfers. Don't let anything like cloud your judgment. He wants. He's he's a head coach that's never been a head coach at Newcastle United. He's a head coach that's always been a manager, sporting director at one point before Dan Ashworth came. <laughs> he was, yeah, <laughs> with his assistant Amanda, yeah. um, and that's that's caused a chasm. Look, Amanda's left a big hole in this football club. Um, she was there for everybody, but progress has been made. I don't know, standing here, whether Newcastle United have appointed the right people to the right positions, whether that layer of management, whether it's performance director, sporting director, commercial director, or the Silverstein, uh, going all the way through the whole the whole set, eels even. I don't know if these people are the right people for the jobs. That will be proven by their results, ultimately. Yeah. But I like, it. it's the way it should be. There has to be those levels and different people dealing with different things and accountability in every single department. Yeah. Because without that accountability, people become lazy, not just by nature, really. complacent, and things don't work the way they should. You've got to keep everybody on your toes. And if you do that, you get better results. Yeah. So I'm all for it. The performance director appointment has been justified just in the last few weeks, really, yeah. where we can't say who played in the Burnley game, but Callum Wilson definitely missed the game in Germany, injury to him and injuries to the likes of obviously Lewis Miley as well during the off-season, Tino Livermento, Joe Willock are still recovering. The injuries haven't stopped just because a new season is yeah. about to get underway. No, no, I think that's the one thing that people's got to be uh, careful of is that it, it isn't an instant reset. Like You don't suddenly say, right, that season's over, right, everybody, there you go, you're all fit again. Yeah. Now these things happen and, and Injuries will keep happening at Newcastle United. Everyone says, oh, if they have a full squad, I guarantee now they'll never have a full squad. No football team ever has has a clean bill of health. There's always something going on, whether that's even declared. There's always something going it's on. It's part so. of the challenge of football as it well, is. managing injuries. Yeah, yeah, like, like you said numerous times last season, Newcastle's seventh place finish, Champions League exit, Carabao Cup exit, FA Cup exit, doesn't have the asterisks of... Well, I had loads of injuries. No, it's, that's, no, that's, <laughs> that's what happened. We can say all we want. We can talk about all we want. We know the reasons why. This, I mean, if they'd had a fully fit squad, they might have finished fourth again. Yeah. You just don't know. I don't think it was that amazingly strong Premier League last year. I think no. it was very similar to the season before. We're still waiting for everybody to have a good season. You know, the type of thing we've seen it five years yeah. ago where yeah. four or five teams are, are really at it and it's tough to get in. Yeah. I don't think it's actually been that tough to get in these last couple of years. because, no. like I say, There's always been one or two teams of yeah. the traditional big six have dropped, dropped off, off yeah. yeah Man United last season Man United had the worst season in living memory almost and it, and it was it might, probably was still well, as we've said <laughs> and they got to Europe yeah <laughs> won the FA Cup would have been Newcastle's greatest ever season yeah, exactly in recent memory anyway yeah it would have so, so yeah. yeah I'm just double checking is that sound definitely working I hope so I hope so <laughs> we had this we had this in Germany by the way oh really yeah we recorded about five minutes and there was no sound yeah, we'll should we see. check and then come back on yeah, if you I want. I think we have to. Yeah, we're back. There was no problem, Liam. <laughs> we were just being paranoid. I was paranoid. No, we did it in Germany where we recorded and then 
six minutes in, it was like, that sounds not even working, you know. <laughs> We've had that problem. A video lost to time. Yeah. It was about Sandro Tonali and his band. We did it at the Vermont, I remember. <laughs> 20 video. minutes. It's never been seen. And to be honest, probably just as well. It was. Yeah, but on, on Sandro Tonali, obviously, if you, like this if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, share and subscribe. I'll get that out. Uh, Sandro Tonali, back in action to a degree. And yeah. he needed that that game. Well, the game that never happened, we're still kind of waiting on things to leak out on. Yes. on how, you, you've you had a little bit of information he played. Yes. And that's one thing that we've seen. I think Martin Hardy came out with that yesterday. Yeah. Uh, sorry, on Wednesday to date this. Um, the scoreline... We don't know. Well... <laughs> or do you? No. Officially, no. Um, Newcastle a couple of years ago did play Burnley. They played two games, didn't they, with completely different 11s. Yes. It wouldn't surprise me if something similar happened. That's all that's. Okay. But. Oh. Wait, I'll be back. I'll be back. You waffle, Luke. I'll waffle. He's got to go and get a ball. This is this is the thing about doing it at a, uh, a football pitch. And also, Dom's got a little bit of information there on Sandro Tonali. Um, it's good to hear he's back. I mean, it was disappointing to hear that he wasn't able to get a game. But we think we know the reasons as to why he wasn't able to play. Um, it was something to do with registrations of the FA. Here he comes. You'll be able to see him. There he is. There you go. That was quick. Ball boy. The ball boy. One of us is going to have to do it. Let's hope it doesn't come over again. I was just saying, on Sandro Tonali, the, the reasons as to why he was unable to play on Sunday it was a disappointment. You've got a little bit more information. Is I'm, I'm, I'm sort of. I can't really get well, my head We touched on it. it just in the first half earlier, where yeah. because it's a neutral venue, it's not officially a training ground practice game. Sandro yeah. Tonali, which our understanding, or everyone's understanding, I think before the start of pre season was. Sandro Tonali can't play in friendlies, he can play in games behind closed doors. But games at neutral venues, Adidas headquarters, even if it's technically cut off to the public, it is officially a neutral venue, has to be registered as a it definitely, friendly. The thing about that one was, having been there, it definitely wasn't cut off to the public. Right. Um, you, had to, you had to get in and out. That's why it was probably not advertised. You couldn't really just stro you couldn't just stroll in. It yeah. was like it was like Adidas Utopia where the, but there was like 5000 people working there. Obviously maybe not many on the Saturday, but you could there was people around who could just mill around the different sporting arenas and venues. It's, it was so, probably asking for trouble if just someone not saying it would have happened just got the camera out and filmed Sandro Tonali playing a game of football. Yeah. If it's behind closed doors at Burnley, he's effectively training. You yeah, can he do is, that yeah. argument. Yeah. So yeah. Um, Unless they put a bib on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So hey, he's, he'll be back in a month's time. First of September will be his first game back. Yeah. yeah we yeah. did a video explaining the slight confusion about his return date, which is officially the 29th of August. So yeah, he'll be back for the Spurs game. But yeah, on the subject of pre season, um, I saw you and Jordan. Jordan's not here. Be meeting up with him at Hull on Saturday before we jet off to Japan. You and Jordan having a bit of a two and four on <laughs> social media. Um, obviously, it's the big transfer story out in Newcastle so far yeah. this summer, unfortunately, has been the sale of Elliot Anderson and Jan Kuba Minty. And they had contrasting debuts, I think. Well, certainly early debut, er, yeah. early friendly games yeah. where Jan Kuba Minty scored a great solo goal and Elliot Anderson got injured. I, you know what, people, people make a lot of, have you and Jordan fell out? Have you got I got few, messages, um, yes. Uh, Honestly, this world, man. I got messages Two lads saying, let's hope they're not playing tonight. Cause <laughs> <laughs> Two lads were good mates, man. Best of mates. We didn't fall out. We'll just have a bit. You can disagree on football. That's what it's all about. Yeah, it's all about opinions. And I've got a totally different opinion to Jordan on this. And that's right, fine. Okay. So, well, here, so my opinion on this is, I honestly don't even care. It served a purpose that he had to be sold. I would much rather, honestly, the, the minute I see Anthony Gordon pull on a Newcastle shirt again, that's gone. It's vindicated. It's justified because it's the lesser. That's what could have been. It yeah. was the lesser of all evils. If you cast United in February next year, when that you know have a great season, their third top. All right, there's your ten points because you didn't sell such and such. And his mint has been great. He's got five goals. And in February he began. I should have just sold him. Hindsight's a great thing. You should have just got rid of him. You know, honestly, I I, I don't. I don't buy this idea that it's going to be painful to see them turn into such and such. I'm going to lay it on the line here. Yeah, I don't think he'll be a world beater. Okay. 
I've seen bits of him. I don't think he'd be a world beater. I'm certainly not going to judge. I could be wrong. I've been wrong on players before. <laughs> I've been wrong on plenty of players. And I've been right on a few as well. But I do trust me football judgment. And I think he'll be a good player. But I don't think he'll be a world beater. I think I he looks like a winger. He's electric, by the way. Electric. Yeah. But in terms of pace. And if he gets the end product right, which, which that goal yeah. looked like he got the end product right. If he gets the end product right, he could be a cracker. Yeah. But I've seen him before. I've seen players just like him before. You all have. He's mm. not, to me, he's not amazingly unique. This could get, like, clicked. Yes. Totally clicked. <laughs> <laughs> but you know I don't Jordan mind. Jordan will be laughing. You know he'll I don't be, mind. Well, I, I don't think he will. Because realistically, we want the bloke to fail, really, don't we? You don't oh. want him to go and be a success. Oh, he's, he's but no, you don't, you, don't, you don't want that, do you? No. There's so them you don't you don't suddenly want him to become Lionel Messi because then you're like then it does feel bad but I don't think mm. he will and I think judging him on on a friendly against a bunch of knee bodies yes. whoever it they is, are it is I mean he's drinking yeah. past blokes yeah. how you yeah. see them out, you, you can see them behind us out there some of them Look, like he's not he's not right. playing against Barcelona is he what I will say is how many times have Miguel Almon and Elliot Anderson lit up preseason I was just going to say Elliot Anderson played against. Brighton who looked like they were literally I don't know what they were doing in that game in the second half yeah, but Elliot Anderson week. was jinking past everybody did he yeah. do that in the Premier League once? no and I like him but we've never seen that Look, once uh, probably premature to judge Jan I mean, it, it is at, at it any is. sort of level particularly in a pre-season friendly but I do see where Jordan's coming from in terms of I think it's one of them where you had a player with potential who Eddie Howe spoke about last season looking forward to working with him and it just so happened that he became the I obvious don't think choice he ever did. I it's, don't it's what think he officially he, said. Yeah, but I don't think he ever. You know, you were himself, in the you yeah. were in those press conferences, and he never spoke about Minty the way he spoke about other players. Mm. He spoke more more glowingly about players like Joe White yeah. than he ever Alex did about Murphy. Alex Murphy yeah. than he ever did about uh, Yankuva Minty. Mm. And I remember we spoke about. It, I was like something not right about that. I wondered He's is it because him, really? Ashworth signed him. And I wondered, was it the Ashworth signing that's almost yeah. like I don't want anything to do with that? Don't know. <laughs> but I always thought that at the time. Turns out they probably knew the hole that they were in and thought he, he might be one we'll have to get rid of. Yeah. And he probably knew then. And they made a decent amount of money on it as well. Um, one thing, if you've read my article on the Shields Gazette, Newcastle didn't quite make as much money as you'd probably think due to the sell-on that they had with the Dents. Oh, okay. So, decent chunk for them. Six, uh, seven figures went to oh, was the Dents. So. Well, fair play then they developed the large. Well, exactly, you know what I mean? exactly. So, so, so that makes the world go six round. Six and a half, seven million is now closer to probably 10 million yeah. in terms of a dense what they got for him and then Newcastle selling them for 33 so the profit not quite as big as, as probably you'd think so yeah good luck to him in his endeavours but yeah wanting to fail oh, in, yeah. A, in a respectful I don't I, I, like, like yeah, yeah in a respectful <laughs> manner nothing against the lad it's not personal fail, fail is, is harsh but you, you know what most of the time there's going to be very very few if any players that when they take the black and white shirt off I'm going to say Oh, you want you to be a roaring success. Bruno, is he your one? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or have you changed your mind? <laughs> That's why I said almost any. Because oh. I'm really not sure. I do love Bruno. So he's possibly one, but at, at the day when that comes, because it's inevitable, it is going to happen. It'll probably be next summer. I just think that will be heartbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned for that. Yeah, I know. 12 months time. If we're still going. Uh, <laughs> and that, that counts on you. Like, share, subscribe. <laughs> no, I think... Um, there's very few players that walk away from your casting and I go, oh, I want you to do really well. No, because at the end of the day, all I want to do is I'd rather the bloke who comes in to replace you does well. So you move on. Football moves. Players move. Managers move. The only thing that doesn't is the football club and the fans. And as long as that, everyone's together on that, then it doesn't really matter who wears the shirt. You know, you want as good as players as possible. The manager, again, this Eddie Howe thing, if he decided it wasn't the job for him, let's not beat around the bush here. All Newcastle United will do is go and get somebody else who might even have a better pedigree. That's not saying I want Eddie Howe to go, because I don't. I think the continuity of having Howe, because there's been so much change, is almost really crucial this summer, in my opinion. But, and I think he knows that as well, mm. I, I think you just get a better manager. Yeah. They're a football club now that aren't, they're, they're, probably not, they're probably not even shopping in Eddie Howe, Eddie Howe markets anymore. They've actually progressed themselves so much that they're a shopping in a different market. That Eddie Howe's proven himself to be better than he was. He's a better manager today than he was when he, he came to Newcastle United. Yeah. But Newcastle United is also a better football club, so they'll be shopping in a different market. So managers change, even owners change. I mean, we don't want these ones to change, and there's I mean, no that, sign, sign they will, but it happens. Yeah, and it has changed 
in terms of the structure this summer as well with yeah. Amanda and my dad stepping away. Yeah. So yeah, we'll. I'm looking forward to Saturday though, Paul. Yeah. We'll move it on because we've just set up a camera and waffled really. I, I said Back I, to the family patch. Oh yeah, for you. Yeah. My mum and dad are going, you know. Are oh, they? Yeah, yeah. Is mom, your mum's from Hull? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And yeah, well, all her family. Tiger at heart. I don't think so, no. No? Well, it's a rugby she town, isn't ah, it? it is, it is. Right. like a lot of leads. Sporty castle anyway, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, she's a season ticket holder. Yeah. Proper, proper Geordie. <laughs> but no, it'll be good. I think it'll be really good to see the players again. I've got no idea what the team's going to be. I've got no idea who we're going to see and who we're not. It was really positive to see Joel Willock training, I thought. Yeah. Um, it looked like he was doing a reasonable intensity of training as well. So we don't know if he played in that game uh, in midweek. I would suspect we'll see him somewhere. Whether that's on the bench, I you don't know. You need to see Tino back sooner rather than later, though, don't we? If he played midweek because the Kieran Trippier situation's up in the air, and then what other right backs you have? Emil Craft, Harrison Ashby, he'll probably get. I mean, to be honest, on the way I would look at it is, I mean, what is there any value in risking these players against a third division German team anyway in a kick around? No, no, I in agree, a kick yeah. around at the end of a end of a you know a. a a get together week basically so but I think need some this, is the this is the first friendly yeah. then you've got your two in two in Japan that's yeah. that's the work that's when the work goes in um, yeah. and then you've got your two where well, they'll do the split teams um, I'm not sure they've got enough players to do a, do split teams to be honest <laughs> there'll be some young lads get a but and imagine. hopefully some new signings like you say um, but Japan will have some decent tests they're both AFC Champions League calibre sides I think both of them have been in the final in recent years so okay. the some of Japan's best, at least. And yeah. That'll be a Harry Kuehl, manager. Yes. Any? Yes. Um, so that'll be that'll be fun. Is he not a failed like EFL manager as well? Did he not do a job somewhere down the divisions? Possibly. Come in the comments if you know. <laughs> well researched as ever. Well, I didn't research Harry Kuehl managerial history. I'm though. sure he did. I'm sure he was a manager in like League Two or something. No, I think you're right. I yeah. Think. Well, that just shows you the pedigree. <laughs> they need to do, they, they need to go over there and, and just get good minutes in. Results don't matter, but you don't want to get beat. Nobody likes getting beat. No, that's uh, the thing with pre-season. People often lose their heads at certain defeats and certain results. Yeah. Even hearing what the score might have been at Burnley, people are, well, are not it, happy. Well, if it was the one doing the rounds <laughs> from, from the in the nose, yeah. that would have been mind blowing. <laughs> would have been fun. It wasn't that though. No. We don't think. Well, we can't officially. Well, say. I thought you might have known more than you're saying. You don't know. I don't know a score line. Right. Okay. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. Yeah. yeah. Right. right. Close. A close game, let's say. Let's Was it? Let's hope. Okay. <laughs> Tell us off camera. <laughs> oh, hey, well, right. We're going to so, play football ourselves yes. as well. What's the They're time? All we'll probably... at, they're all waving at us. Oh, we're 10 minutes yeah, late. We man. are. Right, right. We're going to go. You're going to finish four up? Four rivers? Yeah, four rivers. You know where it is down here in the bio. Um, financial, pension advice. Get stuck in. They'll love to hear from you. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And, you know, click the bell if you love all the Jordy Juniors content. And the next time we see you, we will be. At all. Yes. And then these guys will be in Japan. So we'll see you there.